it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episodes 9 and 10 of A Cabbie Child and Sailor Uniforms. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 9 in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh, somebody's getting their hair cut. Of course. really the biggest thing is I'm wondering how this show is gonna end in a way and it makes me like cause at first going into episodes 1 and 2 I was expecting it to be like okay so you know how the headmistress gave Akebi like the okay to wear this uniform and how I kind of said um this might end with so many different girls wearing different genres or types of the sailor uniform um, for years to come because she's just the girl who started it all. She decided to be different and to, you know, wear this uniform because it was so important to her and having her mom making it. And it's even more special because her mom made it. So, you know, I would like to see that. I'm sleeping. And I shouldn't really be sleepy. It's only 12.42. And I took a nap. I took like a 30 minute nap that honestly felt like five minutes. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Wait, how, do you see Erica's boots? Oh my god. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's a mall for you. That's a cute hat. I think they all just got distracted by going into stores and stuff that they literally forgot to get supplies. Exactly. Hmm. It's hard to, yeah. Look heavy.
That's so cute. <laughs> to make friendship bracelets. Mm hmm. Oh no! She lost the bookmark! But it's important to you, though. Isn't that it?
Hmm. I need like a ladder. Oh, hi. Of course, they're going to make it do a stunt. And that's another girl from Fur Cabby. Of course. This child is like, I'm going to get sick, but it's okay.
It'd be like that sometimes. But at least you had fun. Just girls being girls and hanging out in the rain and, you know, playing, looking at the flowers and playing around while it rains. And in the end, they all got sick. I mean, of course. But thank God they found the bookmark. Like, oh, that bookmark was so gorgeous. I was like, if uh, if she cannot find this, like, when, you, when it's something so important to you that is, in a way, your lucky charm and that it's almost like a part of you, if you lose it, you feel like you're losing a part of yourself. But sometimes in a way that is, you know, the thing of growing up. We take things that, you know, that we love, we keep them so dear and close to our hearts and we still move on, but we still love those things. That's why there's like so many people who still love anime at the age that they are. You could be whatever age and still like it because that's the new normal now. We went into like decades where people was like, no, that that's not cool. And only, you know, a small little niche of people knew about anime. And if you had friends, you slowly but surely coaxed them into anime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now look at it. Anime is fucking normal as fuck. Because <laughs> so many people watch it now to the point that so many people say, it's a little too mainstream because everybody watches it. But you know what? That's okay. I'm fine with that. I don't like when people gatekeep things. I think it's so fucked up. And that's why, like, with one of my other favorite series, Freaking Kingdom Hearts, a lot of the fandom in that kind of gatekeep. And it's so upsetting and misleading for people who are trying to get in the series because they're like, oh, hey, um... There was, like, I think somebody made, like, a video a while ago. They were, like, talking about, oh, the right way to get in Kingdom Hearts. And as someone who has been playing that series for the beginning, I will always, always, always tell you, kind of start from the beginning with Kingdom Hearts 1. You can come into any of them and, like, say, oh, hey, I want this to be my first Kingdom Hearts game. But it is going to be a lot of, like, hella confusing. That's like if you were a JoJo fan or a Lord of the Rings fan or a Harry Potter fan or any type of those fans where it's like a lot of series and a lot of lore, you wouldn't want someone to start in the middle. You would want them to go back in the beginning and such. But with JoJo and, and such, it's kind of very similar to with Kingdom Hearts where it's like they're like... There's, like, a certain niche and a certain criteria for JoJo where it's, like, okay, you can still watch this at the beginning. Because, like, for me, when I got into JoJo for the first time, I started all the way um, with Diamond is Unbreakable, fell in love with the show, and was very interested to see how it was from the beginning up to before Diamond. And I was very glad and honored to sit there and binge the hell out of that show. Because, God, that shit was crazy. You'll never do that. Mm-hmm. Try not to binge a show. Don't be like me and everybody else who tries to binge. It's like, yes, I'm staying up one more hour for this show. Don't do that. Get some sleep. But this was a really sweet episode. I love the fact that we got to see all four of them. Not only hanging out at the mall and doing just normal ass girl things or, you know, friend things and stuff. Because, you know, girlfriends and friends in general always want to go to a mall or outlet mall. Typically when it is the weekend, where are you usually at? You're at the freaking mall because people like to go to the mall. Even though here in Jax, like, we, we technically still have our mall. But our mall has technically gotten, like, run out of business due to our outlet mall. And it's kind of like that for most malls in general. I don't even know if there's any more, like, regular, regular malls um, in the country of the United States of America. I mean, like, I haven't heard anything about Mall of America in, like, years. <laughs> so that kind of says something. But go ahead and pause the video, and I will see you guys in one second for episode 10. Alrighty, episode 10 in 3, 2, 1, go. Yeah, you're probably wondering why, like, it's a different day, different shirt-ish, things happened. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> mm. 
Mm-hmm. And she's wearing a different uniform. I know. It feels so weird because, like, the last episode that I had watched a couple of nights ago on, what was it, freaking Tuesday night, yeah, Tuesday night, Tuesday, Wednesday night, um, was episode nine, and I had stayed up with my mom, I was literally, because, yeah, 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 I did a Tuesday night, um, I stayed up until, like, three in the morning, and I, and I would have finished it by, like, one, two, three in the morning, but I got something to eat. My mom wanted me to watch an anime with her um, that I've seen that she's never really seen. Then we ordered food and I had like a massive headache. And I, and even beforehand, when I was recording on Tuesday, I, ha- I still had the big headache. And I had grapes. And I thought the grapes would have been fine until I got food. Well, it kind of helped. But then when I got actual food, I kind of felt better. But then I kind of felt worse. So I was like, let me take some ibuprofen and let me just sleep it off. And then on Wednesday or whenever sometime before this week is over, um, I'll finally watch it. And now it's Friday going on Saturday and we are officially finishing this in one hour from now. So probably between 1230 or one o'clock in the morning, we will officially be done with this show. Oh, pom-poms! There you go! That is an easy way to make pom-poms. Never would have thought like that. Oh, I know that feeling because I am tired too and I got to go back to work tomorrow. It's okay. Mm Mm-hmm. What's wrong? Are you not wearing underwear? Oh, baby.
She got distracted by a cubby. Poor baby. Mm hmm. Then they do stunts. No, a cubby. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then work your way up to some lifts and stunts. Like, you do know that there are some cheer groups that just don't do lifts. They do nothing but dance and maybe some, like, mm-hmm. And cartwheels and such. Mm-hmm. Look at her toy! Mm-hmm. Here she comes. Really, more or less, there she goes. Okay, and don't you have to do swim practice, Akebi?
<laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> it can't be. No, she got, yeah, oh baby, that's why. Baby is self-conscious about that. Good for her. Excuse me. Oh. Unfortunately, they do. Erica? No, no, it's not your fault. Just remember to have fun. That's all that... <clears throat> matters at the end of the day. It's okay. Oh my god, she's literally me when I was a kid. Yeah. How I felt that self-conscious when I was young like that too. Not the belly button. <laughs> no.
Poor baby, she's just so embarrassed. I just love that the name of her, whatever her name is called, Necro is like, huh, okay, I'm, well, I'm awoke, what's wrong? Not no, not not there, not there. No, don't say that. It's confidence, baby. <laughs> Damn, this episode went by fast. I mean, we're only 20 minutes in, but still. Keep going. Oh, her eyelashes. Oh! Damn. Oh, she might be best girl besides Hotaru. Like, oh, damn. I was not expecting that today. Like, ooh. I 
bad for her. What is it? Okay, hold on. Then, okay, so then what the fuck is that going to be? Like, last episodes. I mean, because, come on, we're going into last episode territory in a couple of minutes. But this episode was really cute. I love the fact that she, she got, you know, to be the focus of this week's episode. I mean, especially for going into last, uh, in episodes nine, I thought that was really good as well for both of the two characters to get the initial focus that they got and such. But I think this was, like, Mm, top tier. Because like I said, six and seven are still my two favorite episodes. I'm just saying. And we still saying that even till the end. But once we get into the last two, I'll probably, that might change. You know, who knows? But the fact is that, you know, cheering with a Kevi, and even though, yes, she messed up, and she compared her body to a Kevi slender figure, and that is mostly like when I was young, And girls who were my age growing up and the norm was, even though at the same time it didn't really feel like the normal, um, most of girls who were my age were comparing their bodies to supermodels and actors and actresses on TV shows and such. And I had this conversation with a friend at least like a couple of weeks ago. Um, And it it hit a little close to home because he asked me... um, with we were we were talking about one one of these cartoons that I like so much, um, Wings Club. If it, if any of you have not seen Wings Club or heard Wings Club, it's just like a magical girl show and stuff, right? So of course, like the characters are all inspired by um, fashion models, and really the poses that like some of the um, mannequins can do, plus the fashion models themselves. And you can tell, especially by the body portions and everything, that they're inspired by fashion models and stuff. Um, and so the biggest thing that I had uh, heard from from this article or really from this, like, video essay that he sent me was when you were a kid, did you ever compare your body size to that of the Winx girls or, like, anything else? And I was like, well, not necessarily with the Winx girls, um, more or less with, like, anything else, like, any celebrity-type model-esque-ish like that, because at that time, that norm was sl- being skinny is better than being this size. And even now, where it's, like, okay for someone to be, um, plus size and stuff, I still kind of do that to myself. And I really do hate the fact that I do that, because it's, like, you're supposed to love yourself. But at the same time, it's like, if you, like, in a way, I don't like my stomach. I It's one of the one things I hate about my body and such. And so I'm trying to change that. And that's the thing. Do, do I think being skinny is going to make me happy? No, I don't think so. I, but I'm really thinking of is being healthy and being in a better shape than I am now, is that going to make me happy? Yes, in my opinion, I feel like that that's going to be necessary for me. But at the same time, yeah, I like food. I mean, even though, like, I don't really eat chicken and um, hamburgers and such anymore because, like I said, I've been a vegetarian for, like, over a year now and such, which is still weird for me to say <laughs> because if you would have told me, like, a couple of years ago, like, oh, hey, DJ, you're going to you're gonna want to be a vegetarian. You're going to go full time. I would have been like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but there was a time where I was going to do it, and this was, I think I was still in high school at the time. Um, but now it, it's so funny that so many years later, like I, I went in with my mom and we went, went and dove in first, but that doesn't mean that I don't indulge myself. I am what I'm like a semi vegetarian and stuff where like, I, I like to reward myself, but I try not to overindulge into my rewards. So like if I am craving meat, like, um, public chicken, I'll go get me public chicken. Like I don't really, I used to love like um, Popeye's, uh, chicken strips and stuff, I haven't had that in a while, or even, like, a spicy chicken sandwich, but, yeah, I think if I go and order a spicy chicken sandwich, or even regular chicken strips from, um, our chicken tenders from Popeye's, I feel like I'm not gonna like it anymore, and such. How my mom had Popeye's, like, I think a cut, like, a month or two 
couple of months, we had it, and she felt disgusted after eating it. And then the weirdest thing is when you don't eat certain foods for, like, a very long time, specifically, like, maybe chicken, or let's say you decide to give up on, like, fast food, but you still kind of eat certain other fast foods. So, like, let's say you give up on McDonald's or, like I said, Popeye's or anything, and you um, go into a store where, like, the grease is very similar to the grease of Popeye's or whatever, the smell isn't the greatest. So, like, now, because I don't, I barely eat chicken um, anytime when I go into our local Winn-Dixie, um, the grease that they have smells disgusting and it makes me want to throw up and such. But I love the fact is, I kind of now wish we got like a full fucking episode about her playing tennis, you know, like if that could happen. Something tells me with the announcement for a Cubbyton, it, it's something about a performance. Like, I mean, we have only two episodes left. So here's hoping that we get the Erica and a Kevy dance violin performance crossover thing. Like, hopefully that happens. I would like to see it. That's a good way to end on the damn show. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction to towards episodes 9 and 10 of a Kevy Chan Sailor Uniform. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next time. For the final two episodes and my final thoughts on this whole series entirely. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.